Hey everyone, so we have already finished doing the major forms, the secondary forms, and the wrinkles. Now we have to do the pores on the skin. First you have to go to the internet and download some pores alpha texture. So there are a few websites you could go to. You go to surfacemimic.com to download some realistic pores texture, some pores alpha here. So if you let's say you like this one, you click on it, and it looks like they are charging for the high resolution photos. There's also a free sample, but it is watermarked. Yeah, uh, if you can't afford to purchase this these nice high quality textures, you could always go to Google.com and get some free ones. Just go to Google Images and just type in pores alpha ZBrush. And there's some pretty nice stuff here too that you could use, just not as high resolution as the ones that you have to pay for, which is this right here. But I've used some of these before and they're pretty decent. So you could just like click that, go to view image and just save those pores images that you like. And once you have them saved, you could just import them in ZBrush. So I've found the ones that I like. I, I got it from surfacemimic.com and I'm using four of them. So I have this one here, which is I'm going to add for the forehead. And I also have this one, which is going to be for the jowl area. And this here is going to be for the face, just on the cheeks. And this one here is going to be around his chin, around his mouth area, where his facial hair is at. And so I'm using four different types of facial details there, just so to give it variety. So I don't want it to be too repetitive, the pores. So try to get different types of pores to apply on your mesh. Okay, so once you guys downloaded the pores details that you want from online, to import it in ZBrush, this is how you're gonna do it. You just go to the alpha here, click on where it says alpha off there, and you click on import, and then you just find the texture that you want and then you double click on it, and I already imported mine here. I have all of them here already that I need. So after you're done importing them and you want to start using them, just make sure that you go to the brush stroke first and you change it to drag rectangle. What we can do with this is draw a single instance of the alpha on the skin, which will give us more control of the detail where we want it to be placed rather than in a randomized type of way. So drag rectangle and then you go to alpha and just choose the alpha that you want. I'm going to start out by using this one here for the forehead and I use damn standard brush for this. So I use this type of brush damn standard for doing pores. And if I just click hold and drag. Okay, so we have some issues here that we need to definitely address. So first, we see some edges here indicating that it's a square texture. So we don't want that to show. So we're going to have to fix that. And also, I see that it's just way too deep, but that's easy to fix. All we got to do is bring down the intensity of the damn standard brush. So, but we need to fix this area, right? We don't want that mark there. Let me just undo this. So go to alpha. We're going to make changes for the alpha. So this is our alpha on there, right? Go to the modify settings here. And first, we're going to set the radial fade to 25. This will soften the edges of our alpha texture. So now if you look here, you see how it's no longer a square. It turned it into a radial with with soft edges and that's what we need so it will blend in properly with the skin so now if we go and check that out and you click hold and drag so that's looking much better but we see that there's still something strange going on here there's a little bit of bulging in going on in there and just a little bit slight edges still showing let me just undo that go back to alpha menu Modify again and just set the mid value to 50. 
and great hold and drag. Okay, I think this will work the best. Okay, so I think that ready to sculpt now. We're ready to implement those pores on there. I'm going to bring down the intensity first. Make sure to do that. Holding the Alt key as I drag, click hold and drag. So I'm just going to add these on the forehead. As you move the mouse away from the starting point, the alpha becomes larger. As you move the mouse around the starting point, the alpha is rotated. Just keep that in mind. Sometimes you kind of have to like rotate it before you let it go first. And if you don't want it to be too symmetrical, just press X on your keyboard to turn off symmetry. Turn off the symmetry. Uh, let me undo that. Really liking that. I'm going to hold the Alt key and drag. All right, that's better. You can drag without using the Alt key, or you can hold the Alt key as you drag. Each gives you a different type of effect. Play around with it as you go back and forth checking your reference photo. Just take your time on this, guys. Adding some pores texture on the skin of a model can bring in depth and life to the character's face and don't worry about making the pores all the same size shape and density you can add variation to it it's even better that you add some variation to it because real life is just filled with diversity And I'm going to use a different alpha for the eyes here and the cheeks. I'm going to use the regular pores here that I have another pores detail. I'm just going to turn on the symmetry for this one. Holding the Alt key as I drag. I would say that ZBrush is the best software to use for creating details like these directly on the sculpt instead of just relying on a color map to create the pores. Having ZBrush allows users to have more control over the surface. What's pretty cool about this too is if you have Photoshop you could make your own custom textures and then import it in ZBrush.
Now I want to do a different type of skin details for the nose. Yeah, the stubbles for something else. Let's try this one. Okay, this is this could be for the nose. For the nose, I'm just going to turn off symmetry for this. Press X on the keyboard. I can drag. Now, if you want a higher resolution course and if your computer can handle it, you could go to geometry and you could subdivide it some more. You could go to subdivision 6 or 7. Another thing you could do is you could actually put the poor details in layers. So if you go to the right tray here where you see layers here, you could turn that on and then you could create a new layer. And what will happen is in this layer, it will be recording all the details that you want on there. So if I just click and drag here. So these new layers that I'm doing now will be added onto this layer there. And if I turn off record and if I turn off or on this eye icon there I could hide the pores there I could even decrease the intensity if I want so this is one thing they could also work with I'm not using the layers here I'm just going to delete that I already know the type of stuff that I want here. So, but if you want to go use layers, go and feel free to do that. Layers are also good if you are working for someone and you don't want anything permanent on the skin until your client or your boss approves it. So, you can delete the layers anytime you want. Going over the nose and let's not forget the eyes. For the eyes, I'm just gonna go back to my other part detail here. I'm gonna press X for symmetry and those eye details there. I'm going to decrease the intensity for this one. Pores vary in different areas of the face. Remember that they also vary in sizes and intensity. So I am just clicking and dragging and constantly changing brush sizes and brush intensity.
Also add some on the lips, just subtly. And I'm going to add those lines on the lips in a minute. I'm going to use a different pore detail, a different pore alpha for the chin here, which is going to be the stubble. There's the stubble right here. Hold the Alt key, click, hold, and drag. I believe I got to crank up the intensity for this. There you go. So we got the stubble there. And I'm going to crank it up a little bit more and do it around this area for the mount. There you go. So you could even have an alpha on top of alpha. I already added the pore texture here and I'm adding the stubble texture on top of it. So that'll be fine to add variety. So I could see there on Einstein, he has the stubble on there, right by his jowl region. Turn off symmetry and sculpt without it. Around the middle, I don't want to turn on the symmetry right in the middle and have it meet like this because it will just look unrealistic when we do that. It will produce a, a natural effect. So around in the middle, I just turn off the symmetry. Okay. Now for the rest of the parts here, the rest parts of the skin, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using the color spray stroke will allow us to spray the pores in a wider region. And also using the color spray is going to be different from the drag rectangle because this is going to be more of a, it's going to create the pores in more of a randomized type of way. And what I wanted to do is for the beginning, which is going to be the parts here nearby the areas of the important facial features, I wanted the pores to be set up in a more organized fashion as it relates to my Einstein reference. So I'm going to use color spray for the rest of the skin. And I'm just going to change the alpha to skin male pores. And I could just start spraying the pores on there. And I have symmetry turn on for this. So just splashing the skin with pores alpha. So there are different ways of adding pores to the character skin. And this is one of them. I could just bring down the intensity a bit.
Okay, now going back to the lips, here I need to add those wrinkles on the lips there. So I'm just going to make sure I'm still on damn standard brush. I'm going to go back for my dot stroke, the default setting for it, and I'm just going to turn off the alpha. And I'm going to just add, let's intensify the line here, making sure I have lazy mouse turned on and radius cranked up. And bring down the lazy radius because I need to have more control as I'm doing the wrinkles for the lips. Bring down the draw size a bit. Turn off symmetry to add a little variety here. Could even add a little bit of like break up there and here. So it's not so perfect. There you go. And we got the lips done. Turn that off. So we got the pores done. I think I missed some. Um, nope, I got all the areas. And what I could do is I could add a little bit more variation here. Just manual marks on the face. So I'm going to go back to my damn standard and turning on, make sure I have the radius up a bit because I want to draw a little bit of a straighter line. Bring the brush size down a bit. Just add more details on the face that will bring more novelty to the overall look. I could also do that somewhere around the eyes here, just not so harsh. Just subtle, subtly. Just more of that realistic feel to it. And just adding more diversity again for the face. Little details like these, they give your character that oomph. You know, that, that fire. So he's an old man and he has a lot of those marks that we have to portray here. This is what makes it so fun doing age people. You could just get crazy with a damn standard brush. I highly suggest that you invest on a Wacom tablet if you don't have one already. With a stylus pen, you can have much better control with the pressure of the brush than you would with a mouse. So this adds more variety to the pores that we have there.
Don't forget to always go back to your reference photo. You could easily get lost here uh, doing the, the wrinkles and doing the pores in the skin since it's so much fun. But yeah, guys, always go back to your reference, making sure that everything is still corresponding. Okay. Somewhere here by the gel, the constant folds that's been happening on the gel show some marks there. So, and turn up solo. I'm actually quite happy with this. If it's your first time doing likeness, don't beat yourself up. I've been there too. Just practice a lot and you'll get better. You will. Next section, we will do fiber mesh for the hair because this hair right here, we're going to get rid of this hair there because it's not looking real. And that was just there as a placeholder. We are going to use fiber mesh for both the hair and the mustache. So see you guys in the next section. Hi guys, this is Corazon Bryant. If you need help in sculpting or drawing the anatomy, or if you need a professional to critique your work, you can send in your work to me and I can show you how to improve it, fix it, and how you can overall get better in your anatomy. All you have to do is go to www.victory3d.com and sign up for a 30 minute video critique. I can open up your file, navigate around it, and show you how to make it better. So if you are serious about upgrading your skills so you can create more realistic sculpts, please sign up.